This lesson is about the order of operations. So the order of operations, actually many people remember it using what's called PEMDAS, but my favorite way to remember it is called GEMS. So I'll write that out. If you want, you can try to guess what the letters stand for. So in this thing, the very first thing that we're going to do in the order of operations, you're going to always start with your grouping symbols. So grouping symbols, there are many different types of them. And so a few of the ones that you're going to see are going to be parentheses. You'll see what are called brackets. You'll also see what are called, different people call them different things. I call them curly brackets. You will also see a division bar, meaning you have something on top of a fraction, something on the bottom of the fraction. Actually, each of those would be done separately. I'll give an example so you can see what I'm talking about. You'll also see things, another grouping symbol that people don't usually think of is a square root. Things under a square root are kind of similar to things in parentheses. So then the second thing is going to be exponents. The third step that we always do in the order of operations is we always will multiply and divide from left to right. And the S stands for subtract and add from left to right. So for the multiplying and dividing and the adding and subtracting, be careful you don't multi necessarily multiply first unless the multiplication is to the left of the division. Same thing, you don't subtract before you add unless the subtraction is to the left of the addition. So let's do a few examples. And as with the previous video, go at your own pace. If you need to rewind, that's fine. If you feel really comfortable with this and you're really good at order of operations, go ahead and whenever I put a problem down, you can pause it, try it on your own, and then just fast forward to the answer. And if you get it wrong, you can always go back and listen to the explanation. But if you're not quite sure, then go ahead and watch carefully. Another reminder, please make sure that you are taking notes. So my first example is 6 plus 12 divided by 3 times 4 to the second power. So first thing you always do is look for grouping symbols. We don't have any. The next thing, we do have an exponent, however. So I'm going to go ahead and do 4 to the second power, which is going to be 16. The next thing we do is multiply and divide from left to right. So the division actually comes before the multiplication, so we are going to do that first. If you try to do the multiplication first, you're going to be in big trouble. So just be careful about that. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. Next step, we still have multiplication left, so we're going to do that. And the very last thing, we add, and we end up getting 72. So another example, we have 24 divided by 4 minus 1. In this problem, we do have a grouping symbol, which is our parentheses. We're going to do that first. We now have 24 divided by 3. So we did the stuff inside of the parentheses first. Since 24 divided by 3 is 8, that is our answer. So for our next example, you'll see that number 3 actually looks really similar to number 2 with one small difference. So in this case, we have no grouping symbols. We have no exponents. 
We're going to start straight away with our division. We end up getting 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. So just be careful about the different problems. Some of them will look similar to each other, but they'll have very different answers. So the next one, I'm going to bring in an additional grouping symbol. I have 3 times the quantity, 32 divided by the quantity 2 plus 6. And then I have brackets closed, parentheses closed. So in this case, you actually have two sets of grouping symbols. So what you do in that case is you do the innermost grouping symbol. So we're going to keep the 32 the same. We keep the division sign where it is. However, our innermost grouping symbol is this parentheses that includes 2 plus 6, which gives us 8. From there, a lot of people really hate looking at those brackets. I honestly don't care, but if you want to change it to parentheses, you can. It looks a little nicer, but it doesn't matter to me. You will end up next doing what's in your grouping symbols, the division. You end up getting 4. Finally, you do 3 times 4, and your answer is 12. So for this next problem, it has a variety of fun stuff in it. So what I'd like you to do is to pause this video. I want you to see if you can do it on your own. Give it a try. And then I'm going to work it out for you in just a minute. So go ahead and pause. Okay, so your first step is to start with your innermost grouping symbols. And so that means that you're going to do what is in these inner parentheses, the 8 minus 6. So you do that, you're going to end up getting 5 times the quantity, 3 squared, minus 8 minus 6 is 2, you get 2 to the third, plus 1. Then you continue on. Your next step is actually going to be what's in your next set of grouping symbols, which is this bracket here. And with that stuff, you're actually going to use the order of operations as you go through. So in this case, we leave the 5 there. We leave our bracket there. We now are going to do everything inside there using the order of operations. And in this step, you can actually do both exponents at the same time. So we know that 3 to the second is 3 times 3, which gives us 9. 2 to the third, which is 2 times 2 times 2, that gives us 8. Then we're going to get plus 1. The next thing we do, we do everything inside of our parentheses here, or our brackets here. Once again, if you want to change it to parentheses from brackets, that's fine. So. 9 minus 8 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Our final answer is going to be 10. So I'm hoping you got that one right. If you missed that, go back and double check, make sure you were using the order of operations properly. So let's do another one that involves a fraction. So for this one, I'm going to ask you to evaluate 10x over 2 times x plus 2 when x equals 3. So if you remember from the previous lesson, you are going to take anything that has an x, replace it with 3. From there, you're going to perform the order of operations on what you have here. So if you remember, the division bar is a grouping symbol. So what that means is that this stuff in your numerator and this stuff in your denominator are going to be done separately. 
So if you want, you can actually do those both on the same step. We know that 10 times 3 is 30. In our denominator, we have another grouping symbol, which is that parenthesis. We know that 3 plus 2 is 5. And denominator is still going to have something else to do. So keep following your order of operations. You end up getting 30 over 10. 30 divided by 10 is going to be 3. So in this next example, things are going to get a little bit weird. There's actually not one like this in the book. However, you do need to know it. So for this one, we have 3 times 5 to the 3 minus 1 power. So for this one, it's a little strange because we have a bunch of stuff in our exponent, and we don't really see any grouping symbols. However, if you want, you can think of it like that this 3 minus 1 has parentheses around it. Sometimes that'll make it easier for people. And then with that, you know that you need to do that as if it were a grouping symbol. So if you ever see something like that, where you have stuff in an exponent like that, that's what you're going to do. So then once you have that, you just do 3 minus 1, which gives you 2. We know that 5 to the second is 5 times 5 which is 25, and our final answer will be 28. So I'll give you just a few more. So we have negative 8 squared minus 3 times 2 times 1. So since we don't have anything inside a grouping symbol, we're not going to do anything with that. However, the negative 8, even though it looks like it's in a grouping symbol, it's actually going to be using the exponent portion of our rule. So negative 8 is to the second power. Negative 8 times negative 8 is going to be 64. Just be very, very, very careful about that. A lot of people will make it negative 64. So... The next thing that you do is you can do the 3 times 2 times 1. For that, you end up getting 6. And in the end, your answer will be 58. So this one's similar. I would like you to go ahead and see if you can do this one on your own. So go ahead and pause it. Okay, so the first step on this is going to be to use your exponent. So that's going to give us 25. Keep this stuff on the right side the same. So now, the next part people sometimes will get really, really confused about, just because of the way it's written, we still have three things being multiplied, 4, 3, and negative 2. So just be very careful about that. The other thing that people sometimes get confused about is that you have a negative and a negative, and when you have two negatives being multiplied, you are going to make it a positive. So even though this 4 doesn't look like it's negative, it does have a minus in front of it. So in the next step, when you do 4 times 3 times negative 2, the 4 actually has a negative. So it's kind of like negative 4 times 3 times negative 2. So actually, you are going to get plus 24. So just be very, very careful about that. I can guarantee that this will be the number one missed on my test, so don't be one of the ones that misses it. And your answer should be 49.
Okay, this is our last one other than two that are honors only or bonuses for CP. So it's gonna be your choice if you're in CP. If you're in honors, you don't have a choice. You have to watch it. So this one, I have five plus the square root of three squared minus four times two. So for this one, this actually, if you remember when I was talking about grouping symbols, the square root is actually a grouping symbol. It doesn't look like it because usually you think of things like parentheses, but that actually is going to be what we do first. So we keep the five and the plus the same, and we do everything inside the square root under the square root using the order of operations. So if we look at the stuff that I've circled in blue up above, you're going to start with your exponent. And so we get 3 to the second is 3 times 3, which is 9. Then you're going to end up getting 9 minus 8, which is going to give you 1. The last thing that you do is you do the square root of 1, which is 1. And your final answer is going to be 6. So as I said before, this last, this last two problems are going to be predominantly honors only. However, they both have a chance at being a bonus on a CP test or quiz. So I would recommend everybody do them. So the first one is kind of fun because we have a fraction in there in addition to a lot of other fun things. So our first step is going to be do, to do this stuff in our innermost grouping symbol, which is these parentheses in here. And when you do that, make sure you just keep everything else the same. 4 minus 1 is 3. So I get 3 squared. Keep on going. Do the stuff inside of that big bracket there using the order of operations, which means we start with our exponent. Then continue doing the stuff in the bracket. In the end, when you add all this stuff together, and then subtract, you will get 16. So final thing that you do is you are going to do 5 over 8 times 16 over 1. You can multiply it whatever way works best for you. Most people like to cross cancel. So if you want to do it that way, you can. You will get 10 over 1 or just 10. So our last problem is the fun, kind of crazy one. We have 2 times the quantity 5 plus 3 minus 1 to the third minus 3 all over 18 divided by 2 minus 7 squared. So we have a lot of stuff going on. One thing is that if you remember, the division bar is a grouping symbol. So what that means is that we can do the stuff in the numerator and the stuff in the denominator separately. So you don't have to do different steps for each one of those. You can do those at the same time. So the first thing to do is going to be in our numerator, we're going to start with whatever our innermost grouping is. And that's actually going to be the 3 minus 1. So we're going to end up getting 3 minus 1, which is 2. 
In the denominator, we're also going to start with our grouping symbol, do the stuff inside of it using the order of operations. The very first thing that we do there is the 18 divided by 2, which gives us 9. And then we get 9 minus 7 squared. Now you're going to continue on using the order of operations. So in our numerator, the first thing that we do inside that grouping symbol is going to be the 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. In our denominator, we're going to do the 9 minus 7, which is 2, which gives us 2 to the 2nd. Continuing on, numerator inside that bracket, we get 2, keep our 2 there. Then we get 5 plus 8 minus 3, which gives us 10. 2 to the 2nd is 4. You're going to continue on. I'm going to actually continue over here. So, denominator, you're done. Numerator, you only have one more step, which is going to be to do the 2 times 10 which gives us 20. 20 over 4 is the same thing as 20 divided by 4. Our answer is going to be 5.